seen Arsenal's appeal in China and Malaysia in the last mm. couple of years. Mm. What are you expecting to see in Japan? What I expect is uh, that uh, we gain some fans in Japan. That's basically our target, you know, that uh, I hope that I can help a little bit and uh, that Ryo Miyashi will help as well <laughs> because he's from Nagoya on top of that. So we are in his area, we are in his home. So that's uh, what we expect and that, uh, that uh, my players, uh, the club of Arsenal discovers as well a side of Japan that is provincial, but is uh, beautiful, you know, and uh, so I expect as well that uh, uh, it is a very positive experience for Arsenal Football Club. It's been a long time since Arsenal toured to Japan, mm -hmm. but the infrastructure is all, all set up there. Why yeah. do you think it's been so long? Arsenal? I can't understand. We never found uh, somebody to take the relay over there, you know, to organise uh, the whole thing. And sometimes the obstacle was as well that championship uh, collided with uh, our uh, free time to travel, so that was not always easy. We also uh, visit Indonesia and Vietnam mm -hmm. this summer, mm -hmm. a little bit behind Japan in terms of footballing status. Mm -hmm. What do you think they can learn from Japan in, in, to catch up? Their organisation level and uh, the, the fact that the structures the, what the Japanese did before they organized a, f a professional championship. They traveled all over Europe, you know, they were very methodically uh, organized and they traveled everywhere. They look how you do it, they go home and they try to do a bit better than you. And uh, they do that very well. So what you can say, uh, copy the structures and stick to the plan. When we were in Malaysia, uh, some supporters were around the team when I chatted with them, I asked them, where are you from? They said, from Indonesia, you know? And uh, apparently, uh, they all told me, if you come to Indonesia, to Jakarta, for example, it will be absolutely madness because people are football fanatics. So they have a basis there. They are, they are very uh, great lovers of uh, Premier League and of football in general. So I, I'm very happy that we go to countries this time where you have not been before. Because Indonesia is a very good football love and Vietnam is a country uh, where football becomes stronger and stronger. And uh, so I'm very, very happy to, to see that. And of course, on my side, I'm happy to go back to Japan as well. I mean, there's no doubt in the popularity. We're going to play in an 88,000 capacity stadium in Indonesia. Is the support the most important thing in a country there that once the, once the mm -hmm. people are into it, once the, the support is, is the most important ingredient. After, you have not to be flooded by that and overtaken by that. And what is the best to, way to, to deal well with that is to have good structures, you know, that uh, uh, all these people, because that means a lot of emotions as well, they have not to rule uh, your decisions. So that's why the structures of a football club, of a federation, are very important. But uh, the love for the game is absolutely there. European football, South American football, even mm. the African Nations Cup, all gets a lot of publicity, gets a lot of following over here. Why do you think that Asia is sometimes the, the forgotten continent of football? Because for a long time, culturally, there's no habit, uh, you know, uh, there. We don't buy, at the moment, Asian football to watch it. They buy European football to watch it. And uh, that's the simple explanation because for us in Asia, it's still below the level that we have in Europe. So people want today to see the best. They want to see the best players and the best players still move today from Asia to Europe. And uh, uh, that's why it's uh, the only explanation I have. It's incredibly difficult for, for countries like Indonesia, Vietnam, even big countries like India to get into the World Cup through the qualification. Mm -hmm. Do you think that needs to be addressed if they're to develop? It is a big debate at the FIFA at the moment that uh, Europe maybe gets too many uh, teams, you know. You cannot extend anymore the number of countries going to the World Cup. We are at 32, you cannot go to more because the World Cup would last for too long and uh, that would not be sustainable. So what Everybody knows that today. We are at 32. Uh, let's not forget the World Cup started with four teams. We are now at 32. 
and uh, we cannot go much more. So now the debate is inside this 32, who do we choose? And there is a big, big force, underground force, uh, inside the FIFA who says we want a different sharing of, uh, of uh, access to the World Cup and uh, more in favour of Africa and a bit more in favour of uh, Asia. What you can understand, because if you look at the population, of course they have, a, they, they have a, an argument. So you think that may change? In the, in it may change in the future, yes. And finally, the, the players have been sort of overwhelmed sometimes by the reception they've received during mm -hmm. these summer tours. What do you think is, is given to them personally, uh, away from the football? I, I, I think, uh, first of all, goal is, uh, is always uh, nice to see that you're loved and that you're famous all over the world, you know. But uh, when you live in your bubble, you don't really uh, realise. But uh, uh, they realise as well, maybe, sometimes how big Arsenal is. And uh, uh, it's a good period. And I believe as well for a young boy to discover other cultures, other way uh, of thinking, have uh, exchange with people who have a completely different culture, can only benefit them. And on that front as well, to be...